Today we're going to be learning about similarity and congruency. We're going to start by looking at congruency. When two shapes are congruent, that means that they are exactly the same as each other. They are identical in every way. They are identical in their size and in their shape. Okay, so let's just take a look at an example over here. So here I've got a triangle. You've been told the sizes of the angles and the lengths of the sides, not in terms of actual values, but just you've been, indica you've been given indication of the fact that they are all different to each other. Now, if I take this and I duplicate it, so I have a, another triangle that's exactly the same. If you put this back on top, you can see it's exactly the same as the one I started with. Okay, so my two triangles are identical, identical to each other. These two triangles are what we call congruent. They have the same length sides in both triangles and the same size angles in both triangles. This triangle I can rotate, okay, and it is still congruent. So when you rotate or, uh, one of the triangles when you, or one of the shapes, so long as you don't resize it, so if I go and do this, now it's not congruent anymore. Okay, but so long as I don't resize it, so long as I keep it the same size and the same shape, it is still congruent even if I rotate it. I can also reflect it or flip it. Okay, so if I do this over here, it is now reflected. Okay, so that is still the exact same shape. I just got a mirror image of it. But if I reflect it back again, it will be how it started. Okay, so it is still congruent to the one that I started with. Right, so these are what we call congruent shapes. So in order for two shapes to be congruent to each other, they have to have the same shape. In other words, the angles must be equal to each other, and they have to be the same side size. Their sides have to be equal. And over here, I see the corresponding angles must be equal, and the corresponding sides must be equal. So all the sides in this triangle don't have to be equal to all the sides in that triangle. It's the corresponding sides and the corresponding angles that must be equal. Okay, the ones that match each other. Right, so if you have that, then you can say this over here, triangle ABC, and then this symbol over here means congruent. Okay, so that we're saying this triangle is exactly the same as triangle DEF. It is congruent to triangle DEF. Even if I have rotated one of the shapes, they are still congruent. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle FDE. Now there's a reason that I didn't just write DEF here. We're going to still look at the naming of shapes when they are congruent. And then the same thing over here, even if it is reflected, the same thing applies. It is still congruent. So long as I haven't resized it in any way, so long as I haven't stretched it or resized it even while keeping the aspect ratio the same, so long as I have kept the shape exactly the same size and shape, it is still congruent, even if I've rotated it, even if I've moved it, even if, it, if I have reflected it. Okay, so now I want you to take a look at the shapes in this activity. And I want you to try and decide for each of the pairs of shapes over here based on appearance. I haven't given you any of the lengths of the sides or anything. Just based on what it looks like, I want you to, to try and to determine if these shapes are congruent in each pair or not. So I'm going to give you two minutes to work that out.
Okay, so let's see what you got for each of those. So in the first one, if you look at these two stars that you had, the lengths of the sides look like they may be the same, okay? But you can see that the angles are not the same. If I were to put this one on top of this one, then you'll see that they are not exactly the same as each other. Okay, so these are not congruent. Question B, you had two triangles where if you take the one and you rotate it and you put it on top of the other one, you'll find that they are exactly the same. So these ones are congruent. Question C, if you look at these two, they, you can see that this side over here is pretty much the same length as that side. But even though the sides look like they're the same length, it's not congruent because if I put this on top of here, you can see very clearly that those angles are not the same. So these are not congruent. Question D, we had two, tri uh, two circles. One is clearly a lot smaller than the other one. So they are not congruent because even though they're the same shape, they are not the same size. Then question E, we had two shapes like this. They look like they might be congruent. If I take the bottom one over here and I flip it, if I reflect it like that, and I put that on top there, you'll see that they are exactly the same. So these two are congruent to each other. And then the last two, I have two triangles over here. Now, if I take this one and I rotate it, then if I put it on top, it's still not the same. But if I then go and I reflect it like that, they are then exactly the same. So in this case, I have one where the two shapes, where one of the shapes was not only rotated and not only reflected, it was rotated and reflected. It is still going to be congruent. So this is congruent. Okay, so now let's have a look at naming congruent shapes. Now remember I said that there was a reason when we had this one over here, or these examples over here, that I didn't just go A, B, C, D, E, F. There was a reason that I had to do F, D, E. Now I'm going to explain that to you here. Okay, so if you have two triangles that we know are congruent to each other, we've been told that these are congruent, then the order in which they are named is very special. Okay, they are named so that the angles in the two triangles that correspond to each other, that are equal to each other, are named in the same order in the two triangles. So if you look over here, angle A in this triangle is equal to angle F in that triangle. So A and F are both written first. Angle B in this triangle is equal to angle D in that triangle. So angle B, so B and D are written second. And angle C is equal to angle E over here. So C and E are written last. So when you are naming your triangles, you need to make sure that you name them so that the corresponding angles, the equal angles in the two triangles, are in the same order like that. What also happens when you do that is you end up with the corresponding sides, which are the same length, also being in the same positions in the name of the triangle. So you'll see AB is first, FD is first, and AB and FD are equal to each other. So AB is equal to FD. BC is, sec is middle to last, and DE is middle to last. Over here, BC is equal to DE. BC is equal to DE. And then my first letter and my last letter, AC, over here, my first and last is FE. Those are equal to each other as well. AC is equal to FE. So over here, AC is equal to FE. So when you name it properly, two things should happen. You should have the corresponding angles that are equal to each other should be in the same order. And the corresponding sides that are equal to each other should also be in the same positions in the name of the triangle. Okay, now let's have a look at one where you are going to practice doing this yourself. So over here, you've got a few sets of triangles that you're going to compare. The first thing you need to determine is whether or not these triangles in each pair are congruent. If they aren't congruent, you just say they're not congruent. But if they are congruent, you need to try and name them properly. And I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this.
Okay, so let's see how you did with those examples. So with the first one, question A, you had triangle ABC and triangle PQR. Now on triangle ABC, you had AB, which is three meters, BC is four meters, AC is five meters. You also had a right angle and you had an angle marked with one arc and an angle marked with two arcs. If you look at triangle PQR, you also had three, four, and five meters. And you had a right angle and an angle that they show is equal to angle A and an angle that shows equal to angle C. Okay, so these two triangles are congruent. Now, when we say that they are congruent, we have to name them in the correct order. So let's check. So if I'm going to do this one as A, B, C, then what is equal to A? Q is equal to A. So Q is going to be first. Then B is the same as R. So R will be next. And then C is the same as P. So P will be last. So it'll be Q, R, P. So angle A, triangle A, B, C will be congruent to triangle Q, R, P, which is what you should have got over there. Okay, so that was question A. Question B over here, triangle S, T, U and triangle J, K, L. Now, if you look at this one over here, I've got triangle T and triangle U are equal to each other, but they're not equal to any angles in that triangle. Tri angle or angle T and angle U, sorry. Angle S is equal to angle J and angle K in this triangle, but there are no angles in this triangle equal to angle L. Okay, I have got lengths of sides that are the same in the two triangles. I've got ST and SU that are both the same as side JK, and I've got TU in this triangle that is the same as JL and LK. But because I don't have all three sides in this triangle matching all three sides in that triangle and all three angles in this triangle matching all three angles in that triangle, that means that these two triangles are not congruent. Even though there are sides that are the same and there are angles that are the same, they are not congruent. The next one we had triangle XYZ and triangle DEF. Now, if you look at these two, you can see that I've got angle Y is the same as angle D, angle X is the same as angle E, and angle Z is the same as angle F, but the lengths of the sides are different. This one is enlarged, an enlarged version of this triangle. This is 7 centimeters, 6 centimeters, and 5. This is 14, 12, and 10. These are all double the length of these sides over here. So these are not congruent because they're not the same size. Remember, for it to be congruent, you have to have the same size angles and the same length sides. They have to be the same size and shape. And then question D, you had triangle MNO and triangle GHI. Now here, angle M is equal to angle H, angle N is equal to angle G, and angle O is equal to angle I. So I've got all three angles in the two triangles are the same. And then over here, MN is the same as GH, NO is the same as GI, and OM is the same as HI. So I've got all three sides in the two triangles. Also, I've got corresponding sides that are equal to each other. So now that means that they are congruent. And I need to make sure that I, I label them in the right order. So if I go with this triangle M, N, O, then this triangle, I have to start with the one that equals M, which is H. Then I have to have the one that equals N, which is G. And then the one that equals O is I. So it's going to be H, G, I. So this one, I've got MNO, triangle MNO is congruent to triangle HGI. Okay, now let's have a look at similarity. So now we've learned about congruency. When you have two shapes that are congruent to each other, they are identical. They are exactly the same shape and exactly the same size as each other. Okay, they can be rotated. They can have different orientations, but the actual shape itself must be the same shape and size. With similarity, we have a little bit more leeway. They must still be the same shape as each other, but they can be a different size. So if I start off with this over here and I duplicate it, these two shapes, these two triangles at the moment are congruent to each other. But if I take this and I enlarge it, now I can't say that these are equal anymore. So let me just get rid of those quickly. Okay, because now I can see that those sides are not equal, but the angles are still the same as what I started with. Okay, so if you look over there, that angle is still the same. This angle over here is the same. 
and this angle over here is the same. So the angles are still the same, even though I enlarged this, the angles did not change. Okay, so when I have two similar shapes, the one can be a different size to the other one, but they must still be the same shape. So the angles must still be the same, but the size is going to be different. Okay, so let's have a look at what makes two shapes similar to each other. If they have the same shape, in other words, the corresponding angles are equal, just like we had with uh, congruent shapes, but the size can be different. The corresponding sides must now be what we say, what we call in proportion. So in other words, if I take like over here, I've got x, y, and z as the lengths of my sides. In this triangle, it's 2x, 2y, and 2z. If I multiply one of the sides by 2, and these shapes are similar to each other, then all of the sides will be multiplied by 2. They will all change by the same factor, which is what we call the, pro the proportionality factor, because they must stay in proportion to each other. So if I take this triangle and I increase it, if I enlarge it by a factor of 2, then all of the sides are going to be multiplied by 2. If I enlarge it by a factor of 3, then all of the sides will be multiplied by 3. If I reduce it, if I make it smaller, which is, say, I multiply it by a factor of a half, then this is going to get smaller. All of these sides will be half the length of those sides. Okay, so when you have similar triangles or similar shapes, they have the same shape, okay? So generally that means that the angles are equal. With triangles, the angles are equal. If we have other shapes, then there's a little bit more to it, but when we're dealing with triangles, which is the main one that you work with when we're doing similarity and congruency, then if the angles are equal, then they are going to be similar. This, the size can be different though. When you have similar triangles, the size can be different. In other words, one can be an enlarged or a reduced version of the other one. And obviously it can also be rotated and reflected just like we could with congruent shapes as well. So over here, if I know that the angles are the same in the two triangles and the sides in the two triangles are in proportion to each other, then I can say that the two triangles are similar. And this is the symbol we use for similarity. It is three vertical lines. So with congruency, it was three horizontal lines. With similarity, it is three vertical lines. Okay. So now I'm going to give you an example or an activity where you're going to try and determine based purely on appearance if these shapes are similar to each other or not. And I'm going to give you two minutes to work on that.
Okay, so let's go through each of those. Right, so in the first example, we had two shapes that look kind of like kites, and we need to determine are these similar to each other or not. Now, based on what it looks like, which I asked you to do it based on appearance, these do look like they're similar. Now, let's just quickly check it. If I take this one and I rotate it like that, then these two shapes, if I increase this one, you'll see that it is the same as the other one. So they are similar to each other. Okay, so for question A, you should have got similar. Question B, you need to be careful. Now here, like I said, with triangles, if the angles are the same, then they will be similar. But if it's not a triangle, like this over here, I've got two quadrilaterals. Both of them have got 90 degree angles. Okay, you can see that they look like they are square angles. So what happens now is, if I look at this, the sides are not in proportion. This side over here is equal to that side, but this side is not equal. This side over here is bigger than that side. So the sides are not in proportion. Even though the angles are the same, the sides are not in proportion. So these are not similar to each other. Question C. We had two triangles over here. If I rotate this one, they do look like they are similar. Let's just check it. So I take that, I rotate it, and I'm going to do this. And I'm going to resize it to see if it's the same. Yes, it is the same. So you should have got that that one was similar. Now, based on what it looked like, they did look similar. So yes, those are similar. Now, this one may have been confusing, okay? These ones might look like they're similar, but they're actually not. This shape at the top here is a smaller version of this one, sort of. But if it was similar, then all of the sides should have been decreased by the same amount or by the same ratio as each other from the bigger shape. But if you look over here, this side over here is the same length as that side. So it did not decrease when this was made smaller. So these two shapes are not similar. If I turn this around to compare them, then over here you can see that those angles are not the same. Okay, those angles over there are not the same, and that's because they are not actually similar. Okay, so over here, these are not similar. That was a confusing one. Then this one over here, you've got a pentagon, and here you've got a pentagon that has been squashed. It's bigger, but it's not just been enlarged, it has been enlarged and squashed. So this is not similar. And then this one, here you've got a cross, and then you've got a cross that's been enlarged and it has been rotated. This is the same cross that's just been enlarged though. So this is similar. If I do this and I resize it, it is exactly the same. Okay, so that is similar. Okay, so that's what you should have got for F. Right, now let's have a look at naming similar shapes. So just like we had rules for naming congruent shapes, we also have rules for naming similar shapes, and the rule actually works exactly the same. Okay, so if you've got two shapes like this, triangle ABC, triangle DEF, and we are saying that those are similar, then just like with congruent shapes, if, the, if it's named with ABC, then that means that in FDE, F is the same size as A, D is the same size as B, and E is the same size as C. Okay, so let's have a look at that over here. So angle A and angle F are the same, angle B and angle D are the same, and angle C and angle E are the same. And here you can see A, B, C, and D, E, F. Angle A is equal to angle F, angle B is equal to angle D, and angle C is equal to angle E. Okay, then just like we had with congruency, we also, in congruency, we were able to say that the equal sides were in the same positions in the, the names of the two triangles. Here we can say that the corresponding sides are in the same positions. So over here, AB corresponds to FD. So if you look over here, AB is X, FD is 2X. BC is Y, DE is 2Y, and AC is Z, and FE is 2Z. So AB and FD correspond to each other, but they're not equal. So when I had congruency, I was able to say that AB was equal to FD. 
but I can't do that with similarity. So AB is equal to FD multiplied by a constant, whatever the, the proportionality constant is in this situation. In this case, it is 2. But it might not always be 2. It might be 3 or 4 or 5 or a half or anything, okay? So this k over here is just whatever we multiply the sides in the one triangle by to get the sides in the other triangle. That is our proportionality constant. And it has to be the same for all three pairs of sides, okay? So AB corresponds to FD, and you can see that those are in the same position in the name. BC corresponds to... DE, and they're in the same position in the name. And then AC corresponds to FE, and they're in the same position in the name. Okay, and they all are being multiplied by that same proportionality constant. In this example over here, they're all being multiplied by 2. So K in this example would be 2. Okay, so now I want you, just like we did for congruency, I'm giving you an example here where you now need to determine whether or not the triangles in each of these pairs of triangles are, are similar to each other, okay? But now, something that's different for similarity is you only need to know that the angles are equal or that the corresponding sides are in proportion. You don't need to have both of those sets of information. So if you know that the angles are equal in the two triangles, then you know that they are similar, even if you don't know anything about the length of the sides. And if you know that the, the sides are in proportion, so all the sides in one triangle are double the length of the sides in the other triangle, or triple, or five times more, or whatever, but they all are in proportion to the sides in the other triangle, then you know that it is similar even if you don't know anything about the angles. Okay? So I want you to look at each of the examples over here, and I want you to decide if these are similar or not, if they're not similar, you obviously just write not similar. But if they are similar, I want you to try and, and name the triangles in the correct order. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to work on that. Okay, so let's go through each of those. So question A, you had triangle PQR and triangle MNO. You can see straight away by looking at them that they have got angles in both triangles that are the same as each other. So we don't even really have to look at the lengths of the sides to know that they are going to be similar to each other. But just let's just have a look at the lengths of the sides anyway. So you can see you've got a 12 centimeter side, 14 and 16. And here you've got 6, 7 and 8. 6, 7 and 8 are half the size or half the length of 
12, 14, and 16. So these two triangles are similar to each other. Now let's just quickly make sure that we label them in the correct order. So if this is P, Q, R, then P is the same as M. So it's going to be M first. Then Q is the same as O, so it's going to be O second. And then R is the same as N, so N is going to be last. So it'll be triangle M, O, N with P, Q, R. So here I can say, therefore, triangle P, Q, R is similar to triangle M, O, N. Right, in the next one, we have triangle ABC and triangle DEF. Now, this one, we don't have angles that we've been told about. But remember I said, in order to know the two triangles are similar, you only have to know about the angles or the sides. You don't have to know about both. Okay, so to work out that this is similar, I need to look at the lengths of the sides and see, are they in proportion? Okay, so here I've got two, and the shortest side over here is three. Here I've got four and the shortest side, and then the corresponding sides over here, these are both four and the corresponding lengths over here are six. So there are two ways of looking at this. I can either say, okay, this, if I want to go from two to three, I multiply by one and a half. Okay, and if I take go from four to six, I also multiply by one and a half. If I go from four to six, I also multiply by one and a half. But I can also look at the ratio inside the triangle. I can see if the sides of the or the lengths of the sides in the triangle are in the same ratio as each other. So over here, this is two and four and four. These are double the length of that. And over here, three and six and six, those are also double the length of this. So the ratio of the sides inside the triangle is the same as the ratio of the sides inside that triangle over here. So when I, now I know that they are similar to each other, okay? The sides are in proportion. Now what I need to do is I need to figure out what order to name these. So I can go A, B, C. Now A is the side that is between the two sides that are the same length. So over here, or the A is the angle that is between the two sides of the same length. Over here, E is the angle that is between the two sides of the same length. And then B and C, now, when you are looking at, this is an isosceles triangle, so these two angles are going to be equal to each other. So angle B and angle C are going to be equal to each other. Same thing over here, angle D and angle F are going to be equal to each other. So it doesn't matter, the B and the C and the D and the F, they can go either way around, okay? The A has to correspond to E, but the B and the C and the D and the F are interchangeable in their order. So over here, you could have said that angle triangle ABC is similar to triangle EDF, or you could say the triangle ABC is similar to triangle EFD. So the A corresponds to E no matter what, because that is this angle over here. It's the angle that is between the equal sides. Over here, this is the angle between the equal sides. So those have to correspond to each other. But the other two angles are the same size as each other. So in both triangles, it doesn't matter which one I say first and which one I say second. So triangle ABC is the same or is similar to triangle EDF, or I could also say triangle ABC is similar to triangle EFD. Okay, so that was question B. Question C. Here we've got triangle GHI and triangle JKL. Now in GHI, I've got 4 meters, 5 meters, and 6 meters. And in JKL, I've got 3 meters, 4 meters, and 5 meters. So all of the sides in this triangle are one less meet, or one meter less than the sides in this triangle. But please be careful. Adding one is not the same as multiplying by a common amount. So adding a common, common amount is not the same as multiplying by a common amount. So these are not similar. In order for them to be similar, I have to have a common factor that I multiply by. If I try and multiply by anything from to get from the 3 to the 4, it's not going to be the same if I try and multiply to get from the 4 to the 5. It's not going to be the same if I try and multiply to get from the 5 to the 6. It's not the same factor to multiply from the one triangle to the other triangle. So these are not similar to each other. Okay, so please be careful if you have two sides or if you have sides in the two triangles and it looks like the same thing is happening to those sides, but it's not multiplication or it's not, mul not division, if it's additional subtraction, then they are not going to be similar to each other. And then the last pair that you've got, triangle STU and triangle XYZ. 
you can see when you look at them that they have the same size angles in the two triangles. So these are similar. We have to make sure that we label them in the correct order. So if I go STU, then S is the same as Y, so Y is going to be first. T is the same as X, so X will be second. And U is the same as Z, so Z will be last. So over here, I've got triangle STU is similar to triangle Y, X, Z. And that's what you should have got for those. And that is how we do similarity and congruency in geometry. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also, be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.